Okay, guys. Okay, guys. It's Old Man G here, uh, recording a pre-recorded video, actually. Um, so normally I'll do these these live, um, obviously discussing stuff like that. But just a few things on this week and lack of time. I'm going to get out my round of sixteen VM recording as we speak, just before the Wales uh, versus uh, Denmark game. It's going to be an absolute cracker in game. Um, but before we get into it, what I think, my predictions, and how I think the game is going to go down. If you're new to the channel, to like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. We are covering obviously the Euros and Cop America as well. It's been really, really popular. So I'd really appreciate. It. We're trying to get to 3K subscribers. That's the goal. I know it's an ambitious goal by the end of the year. So really appreciate if you guys could hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. So when we go live, um, and make sure you like the video as well, share it, and get involved. So um, round of 16. I mean. Obviously, um, you know, as a brief recap, it was an absolutely dramatic end, I think, to uh, the round of the, uh, the group stages in that final group with Germany, Portugal, France and Hungary. Um, shout out to Hungary again. I will say shout out to Hungary again over and over again because they were so close to causing a massive upset because had they won, Germany would have basically been been out. Um, so shout out to them and what they what they achieved in, in that game um they just were drawn in the wrong group to be honest france and portugal is another thing i bet they were a bit portugal's a bit dodgy towards the end um now they're obviously playing against belgium so i don't i mean i, I don't quite understand why put the portugal portuguese were like oh yeah let's just kind of you know not you know wouldn't they prefer to ha have had a, a, a better draw again but anyway it is what it is but Let's look at this round of 16 and go for my, my round of 16 predictions on. First, I'll start with this, obviously, the, the left-hand side of the bracket first, um, starting the top. So, and then I'll obviously go into quarterfinals and so on. But Belgium versus Portugal is obviously um, the first at the top of this, this bracket, although obviously it's going to be Denmark that's playing first. But Pel Belgium versus Portugal, I think, is a really, really tough one for me to predict, actually. Uh, I just, you know... Um, I Lukaku, I've actually been really. I don't. I don't know why he's not been getting a lot of, lot of uh, attention. I've generally been really impressed by Lukaku this um, this tournament. You know, his finishing has been good. Um, his overall link up play um, has been really good. His touch has been better. Like for me, so, aside from Gini Wijnaldum, he's arguably one of the best players of the tournament. Um, Portugal. Um, obviously, they've got the goal in Ronaldo there, who will score the penalties. Who will do the business. But I, I am not convinced by the Portuguese defence, really. Um, I don't think, obviously, Bruno Fernandes has not really done what we would have liked him to do um, in terms of creating the chances. Um, they're very, very pragmatic, which, to be fair, might be um, might suit um, Portugal. But what I noticed in the game against Denmark versus Belgium is that Belgium looked like a side that can be got at if they're pressed. You know, if they're pressed really, really high, the pitch really hard, like Denmark did over and over again, you know, then um, then they they can be they can be uh, they can be but uh, they can have issues. Um, but Portugal are not a high pressing side, um, and I think they're going to allow Belgium to have more of the ball. They're going to try and counter attack, but I just don't think that that's going to work as as effectively um, as it did against Hungary, for example, um, or even against um, even against the France. Um, so I think you might see a similar situation in Germany where um, it doesn't really work out um, and, you know, Belgium's have the quality, especially if you get, get the likes of De Bruyne in there, to do the difference. So, but I don't think it's going to be a route, but I, I'm going for Belgium to Portugal 1 um, as my first prediction. Um, I won't take too long with these because obviously I don't want this video to go on for too long. Um, going on further... Um, Italy versus Austria. I think Italy versus Austria is a done deal for Italy. Um, shout out to my Austrian friends, brothers who are watching this this preview. But I just think that um, Italy, again, have probably been, I'd argue, uh, the most impressive team tournament so far. Um, Belgium probably being second. I think Netherlands being third. Um, they And the thing is with this Italian time is it's not that they're just defending well. But it's also that they're actually pressing high as well, which I've not really seen from an Italian team in a while. Mancini really is getting these guys to coach well. And I just don't, I don't really know what Austria are going to do, really, you know. Um, and I, I don't, they, obviously, they do have good players, obviously, Austria and Artovich, et cetera. Um, um, and I guess they can be quite pragmatic, but I just don't, I just don't know how they're going to create against, how, how many chances they're going to create against the Italian side. But you never know with football. Um, but Italy are the overall favourites, and I think that Italy will win comfortably 
um, with a 2-0 win for Italy. Um, going further down, obviously, we've got France versus Switzerland. Obviously, France um, having just about topped the group um, in that crazy stage. Um, this is an interesting one. I think this is... Um, <coughs> I think France will probably win this game, but we have seen that France have really struggled um, to deal with teams that um, play a low block. Um, the Hungaries, for example, um, in this tournament, you know, and even Portugal. Yes, okay, they, they, they got two, but they... Switzerland will be a bit more, I think, a bit more compact. Maybe not as compact as Hungary, but they'll be there. I think my issue with Switzerland is, you know, do they really have consistent goal scorers that can really cause trouble to this France France team? I'm not sure. Um, would I be? I wouldn't be surprised if it was a draw and it went to extra time. But I think that France will win extra time. But I don't think that's going to happen. <coughs> I think France do have enough. But again, much like the Hungary game, I just don't think this is going to be an easy one. Um, if I'm a betting man, I would probably say this would actually end 1-1 and that France will win it in extra time. Um, I just think that the pragmatism that Switzerland could implement, I'm sure they will, um, will, frust will frustrate the French. Um, so I'm going 1-1, but France will overall win it in extra time. Croatia-Spain is going to be an interesting one. Now, as I said several times, I think that I think that, that game against Slovakia was rigged. I generally do. Um Dubravka essentially threw the ball into his net. Um, <laughs> shout out to my Slovakia brothers watching this. Um, I just I just don't know what happened. They just capitulated, just completely and totally capitulated. Um, so I'm not sure how seriously I can take that game, given that the other two games are quite lackluster. Obviously, Sergio Busquets will be back, and I think that would be helpful. Um, Croatia, you know, the best performance was against Scotland. I mean, it's, it's, and this is the thing, it's like, for both Croatia and both Spain, their best performances were against were against um, in their final games. So it's very difficult to judge whether they just needed time to grow into the tournament or whether they were one-offs. Um, what I would say, though, is that if Murata plays, then the Croatian defence shouldn't have a problem. Um, although, you know, what has happened to Murata is unexcusable. However... Um, I, I don't know. It's 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 just. I the thing is, both both of these teams are lacking a consistent goal score up top, um, and are relying on having a degree of possession to to win to win games. That's a, that's effective. So they're both of the same predicament. Um, I, I'm only probably going to lean towards Spain slightly more, just because they probably have a bit more of the bench to change to change things. That's it. I I can't really. Tell this game, and to be honest, if either two revert to their form they played in the previous two games, they're probably going to lose. But I'm going to give the edge slightly over to Spain, um, and it's not going to be a high-scoring game. I'd probably say something like maybe one nil to Spain, one nil to Spain. Um, right on the other side, on the right-hand side of the bracket, halfway done now. Sweden versus Ukraine. Um, Ukraine. Had brilliant performance against Netherlands, um, but their keeping and the defense was a bit questionable. Um, Sweden are just Sweden have some solid players. Um, Foisberg obviously is, is one of the one of the top scores in the tournament. Um, and in order to get the job done and they want to defend well. Um, so I'm not saying that they've got they're going they've got brilliant uh, goal scorers, but I just think that the, the Swedish defense is very solid. Shout out to my man Lindelof. Um, always got a back injury. Um, I think I'll give this, this to the Swedes. I think Ukraine. I think they. I think they'll give a good shot. I think they'll count on themselves. I think they will score, but I think Sweden um, will have enough for them. So I think I'll go with Sweden probably to Ukraine one. Well, most of my scores are quite conservative. Because I don't think that. I think a lot of people are expecting drummings in this round. That it's going to be fours and fives and sixes, but. I think when you get into the, the the thing about the round of sixteen, when you get into these 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 uh, next stages, people the fear for every team, no matter what, is that they don't want to lose because it's just a one-off game, you know. So people teams, I think in general, will be more pragmatic than you think. Here's the big one, obviously, because I'm obviously based in England. England versus Germany. England versus Germany, man. Um, um the heart says England, the mind says Germany. But the thing is, is that, again, with both of these teams, it's going to be it's going to be based on who gets selected. 
I think if Germany um, start with Goretzka, um, th uh, then I think that they will that they will cause that England for a lot of problems. Um, I think it'll be very, very difficult for England um, if Laos, uh, if Joachim sells Timo Werner. Well, you just give advantage to England, really, you know. So, and likewise, if Southgate, you know, is he going to? I personally think that Foden should be dropped um, and replaced with Saka on the right. Mount, from what we gather, is not going to play because of the of the uh, quarantine. So, I assume Grealish will come in as a standard. So, re and then Kane, Kane isn't going to be dropped. So, Kane is probably going to start. So, really, the only position that I think could potentially change is that right. And I personally think that Saka should play there, not, not Phil Foden. Um, they've tried the Foden, Sterling, uh, Kane thing before it didn't work. Okay, yes, you have not tried this, um, Grealish, Sterling, Foden, Kane, and maybe that might be something, and Grealish could potentially make the difference in this game. Um, but Müller's obviously going to be playing with German. This is, this is a tight game, um, but... Gareth Southgate will know what happened in 96, him missing the penalty against Germany. Um, and he will not want to lose this game. He will want revenge. By hook or by crook, he'll want to win. And it's in Wembley. Um, I just think that, you know, England, dare I say, England, I think England might, might make it. The factors are there. Um, and for the sake of the state of the nation, they know they have to. <laughs> because if they don't, if they get a battering by Germany, England, they know these these players are going to hear the end of it for the whole. Of, they are really, really not. They're going to be booed, heckled, all the rest of it. So the pressure is on the English now. I think they might do it, um, and I think they will probably do an extra time. I think again, conservative two one to England. Um, last two games: um, Netherlands, Czech Republic. Um, Apparently, Czech Republic, Netherlands have never beaten Czech Republic in, in uh, I think, Europe, in the Euros. Didn't know that. Um, and even though I would have said the Netherlands are favourites going into this, it is very interesting, um, that stat and what De Boer has obviously done um, for um, for Netherlands so far. Is it him and his coaching, you know, or is it was it the quality of, of, of the group or just the players that just turned up? The Czech Republic... I don't know if I've been particularly impressive, really. You know, okay, yes, they beat Scotland, enough said, but um, they held on against uh, Croatia um, and, they, and they narrowly lost to England. So, but um, I still think Netherlands will do it. I just think, I just think the way the Netherlands are playing now, I just don't see a lot from what I've seen in the Czech Republic so far. They have a lot to offer, but again, history history um, has a way of, of, of repeating itself. And at the end of the day, how many times have the Netherlands beaten the Czech Republic in European competition? Not that much. Um, I think they were in the same group as qualifying, if I recall, you know, and um, so the Czech Republic will know this Netherlands side. So I don't think this is going to be a battering. I, I still probably give the advantage to the Dutch a bit, maybe a 2-1, but the Czech Republic know this Dutch team. Uh, and I think it's going to be a difficult game. Finally, Wales versus Denmark. Woo, almost over. Um, Wales versus Denmark, man. Um, this is big for the Danes um, with everything that, that happened, obviously, in the group stage. And I think the Wales were see last year were seen as the underdogs, the people that really wanted to, um, you know, um, people who are rooting for, you know, with what they were trying to do, especially the, the departure of, of Gary Speed. But now it's almost like it's almost like Denmark are now the underdog. Even though I think that Denmark actually have a better team overall um, than Wales do. Um, you know, I don't think it's going to be a weird position that Wales usually thrive being the underdogs. And yet they're in a position where they're kind of like, people don't want us to win or not really underdogs or sort of bet. And I don't know. And I'm interested to see how the players are going to handle it. Um, I don't think they're going to handle it that well. I don't think this is the right framework that Wales operate in, although they have obviously the Bells and Dan James, etc. Shout out to Dan and James, by the way. Um, but I just think that, especially in Amsterdam um, and all the Danes that, the Danes that will be allowed to go there, the and um, just everything, just there's a lot emotion you can take you through the games. I generally think that um, that Denmark are probably going to do this one in Wales, unfortunately. So. 
Uh, 2-0 to Denmark is what I think. And if they play like they did against Belgium, it could even be 3-0, to be honest, because they played absolutely fantastic. The only issue with Denmark um, is basically finishing. Paulsen and Braithwaite, um, although that was a good finish by Paulsen against, um, uh, who was it against? Uh, Belgium, I think it was. Um, but um, uh, they just, they could be better finishers. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, like, share, and subscribe to my devils to you. Oh, sorry about that. Remember, like, share, and subscribe to industry reports when you want to smash the notification button for latest Euro news and Copa America news. Have a nice day, everyone. Remember to subscribe. Comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Who's going to win these Euros? Who's going to win these round of 16 games? Have a nice day and cheers.